Hello, welcome to Michelle Sews Again. I'm Michelle. Today I am going to share with you some fall trends and some patterns that I found so that you can make those fall trends if they interest you. If that sounds interesting to you, then please stay tuned. Okay, so I did some research and there are a lot of different views on what the fall trends are. The few that I'm going to share with you are ones that were consistent across all the different um, resources that I found that were explaining what fall trends are. And they are also ones that I would be interested in participating in. So I didn't include ones that I wouldn't make because they're just not my style. So I encourage you to go on Pinterest as a is a great resource and look up fall 22 trends. And maybe there are some that I'm not mentioning that you would love. Um, but these are the ones that I would be interested in, um, or that I might have already made. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. Alright, so the first trend that was actually across every <laughs> resource that I found is a bomber jacket. And bomber jackets in a variety of fabrications, which I thought was really interesting. So um, they really talked about um, bomber jackets in leathers, in satins, in quilted fabrics, in brocades, in denim, um, So and even knit bomber jackets. So I have found a few patterns that um, I wanted to share with you. I did pull in a couple of big four patterns for each of these trends, even though as we all know the big four and I don't get along um, but I wanted to include those for those of you that prefer the big four patterns so for the bomber jackets the first pattern that I found is the simplicity 8418 and this is a style that I actually would be interested in if it was more size inclusive it is a raglan sleeve lined bomber jacket, which is exactly what I'm looking for. A lot of them have the set-in sleeves, but I really love the look of the raglan sleeve bomber. So this Simplicity 8418, I'll make sure that I'm putting pictures in of all of these um, patterns that I'm talking about. And it's just a good basic style of bomber jacket. The problem for me is that it only goes up to a bust size of 44 and I am currently a 50.5 inch bust. So it's not going to work for me. Um, but yeah, it's a great pattern. So uh, check that one out if you like the big four. The next one that I found is another big four. It is the New Look 6545. It is also a traditional style bomber jacket with raglan sleeves. And I think you can line or not line this one. Um, it's got the ribbed cuff, the ribbed neckline. It's got, you know, it looks very similar to the simplicity pattern that I just shared, um, but it is less expensive. It's new look. Um, the problem with this one is it only goes up to a 40 inch bust. So again, another one that's just not for me. The, ne the next pattern that I found is from Itch to Stitch and it's the Causeway Bomber. This one is not a raglan, so this is the reason that this one doesn't appeal to me. But I do love the fact, I like the style lines on this one or the seam lines on this one because they're these two like seam lines that go like that on the front panel. So it's a great opportunity to do some color blocking if that interests you. Um, and it's got uh, contrasting um, strips on the shoulders if you wanted to do something like that. I think it's a great, uh, and the sleeves are pieced. So this one is a great way to do some color blocking, which I think could be super cool. Um, uh, so yeah, that's the Causeway Bomber Jacket from Itch to Stitch. The next pattern that I have is the Amelia by Wardra by Me. This is another one that's a traditional style bomber jacket, except it's so it's got satin sleeves and not raglan. It's got the rib cuffing at the the sleeves, the hem, and the neckline. It's a zip up, fully lined. It does have bust darts in this one. The other ones I that I've looked at so far did not have bust darts. Sizing on this one is pretty inclusive. It goes from zero to twenty four and then 30 to 54. I don't know that why it skips a couple of sizes in the middle, but okay. 
the um, sample images on the itch to stitch nope the wardrobe by me website have a lot of really beautiful versions that are made up in a lot of different fabrications it looks like some are even made up in knit so it looks like it could switch between knit and woven so that could be a good option for you the next one that i found is from style arc which you guys know i'm a big fan of style arc um, and this one is a raglan sleeve style it's got slant pockets um, it's got a strip all the way down the sleeve um, and it's a little bit of a longer version so I'm actually kind of liking this one because of the length I don't know that I would want one that hits me right at the top of my hip just because most of my tops tend to be a little bit longer than that so that could be a weird proportion if I'm wearing that bomber jacket. So I do like the length on this one quite a lot. And this last one that I want to share with you is called the Birdie Bomber Jacket and it's from Sew This Pattern. And this is actually the one that I think I'm going to make. Um, I This is a little bit out of the norm for a bomber jacket. It is not only a raglan sleeve, but it's a dolman sleeve. So it's got all that extra room down here. Um, and I just think that it's an interesting looking jacket. I love that it is so different looking than a typical bomber jacket, but it's still got that bomber style. It is on the uh, traditional length side. Um, so I might lengthen it because I do love the length of that style arc bomber. So I might lengthen it a little bit. I'm not sure yet, um, but I do. I love the style of this one and the pattern is only $10. So it's not a crazy expensive PDF. Uh, so yeah, that's I think the pattern that I'm gonna go for. I definitely want to make my bomber in a brocade. I had bought a brocade fabric when I was on my Socation last year in September. I don't have my fabrics with me, so I can't off the top of my head think about what that brocade looked like, but I remember buying it with a bomber jacket in mind. So the only thing that I'll need to do now is to find a really nice lining to pair up with that brocade. And I'll talk about that in not next week's, not this coming up Friday sews, but the one after, um, because I'll be home by then and I'll be able to look at the fabric and then do some online shopping and find some lining fabric for that. So yeah, I'm that's definitely on my to-do list for this fall is a bomber jacket. The next trend from fall 22 that I'd like to share with you is sweater vests. Now, there are so many sweater knit options in fabric out there these days that you if you're not a knitter or a crocheter you can still get a knit fabric sweater vest so what are some fabrics that are what are some patterns that i found so again i'll start with the big four i found two simplicity patterns one is simplicity 9374 and I believe Sarah from Naughty Gnome Crafts has made this one before. It's got a couple of different versions. It's got one really long version. It's got one average length version. And those are both pullover v-neck vests. And then it's got two button-up versions. Is that right? Yeah. And then it's got two button-up versions. One is a longer length and one is kind of a cropped length. Um, I believe the trend is more of just a traditional length v-neck sweater vest so option b would be the one that would follow the trend but i think doing something a little outside of the norm for a trend is kind of fun so i think any four of those would be nice um, size wise interesting it looks like this one could actually be one that would be a contender for me because the finished bust measurement goes up to 58 inches so that would I wouldn't even need to go to the max size to get one that would fit my bust. Um, the problem is that they don't give you the finished waist or hip measurements, so um, not sure about that since I do like, I am kind of like similar measurements all the way down. So yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, the next simplicity pattern is called is Simplicity 9018 and this is a wardrobe pattern. It comes with a very long like sweater dress. It comes with a turtleneck shirt with knit elastic waist pants and then this 
kind of a, it's a knit vest, but it's almost like a poncho vest. It's one of those ones that kind of goes out to here. And it's just kind of almost like a rectangle with a V-neck. I'm actually interested in that one. I think that could be cool. Um, it does say that the best measurement for this pattern, the largest size is 48 inches, but I'm thinking that based on the way that that vest is constructed, that that wouldn't be a problem for me. So I think I could actually do this one. Um, the finished bust measurement is 51 and a half, but again, I don't think that holds true for the V-neck vest. So this could be one that's an option for me. I do like that style. I like the depth of the V-neck. I like the length of the top. And I like the fact that it's open like that on the side. So I might consider that one. The next sweater vest pattern that I found is from Style Arc and it's called the Keith Knit Vest. It's just your traditional V-neck sweater vest. Um, it is straight and boxy, which I like. It's got the V-neck band, which looks like it's optional. You don't have to use the rib neck band. Yeah, so I think that's a great pattern. I love Style Arc, so that could be another option for me. Um, their sizing is always, always inclusive. The next pattern is not really a pattern, but I found a blog post from Lamazi Fabrics, and she talks you through how to design or how to construct your own v-neck sweater vest. Um, I won't do this because I'd rather just use a pattern, but um, it, she tells you how to determine how deep you want your V to be. Um, you're using an existing like t-shirt from your wardrobe as your base. Um, so yeah, I think I thought that was interesting. If you didn't want to spend money on a pattern and this is really just, it's really something simple that I can understand why she would go to a, an existing t-shirt to draft this seems like a, a good thing. I will make sure all of the links for all of these patterns will be in the description box and I'll make sure that this blog post link is also there in case you wanna figure that out on your own. And then the last pattern that I have to share with you is from Wardrobe by Me and it is the Amber Sweater Vest Pattern. This one is just, again, it's your traditional sweater vest pattern but it does come in a couple of different lengths. I believe they are all, oh, and it also comes with a crew neck or a V-neck and then it has a crop length or a regular length. Um, size wise, so it looks like size wise, the max bust measurement is 51 inches. Um, it's the max size would just barely fit me. All right, so that's it for sweater vests. The next trend that I wanted to share with you is the utility jumpsuit. So um, if you're not aware right now, there is an Instagram challenge going on. It's hashtag so jump so romp jump play 22 is hosted by V from 85th and Wade and it's all about the jumpsuit overall boiler suit kind of trend and the 26th of October is national jumpsuit day so um I have seen a ton of jumpsuits over the last several months people are still making them still wearing them and clearly it's a trend for fall 22. there are a ton of jumpsuit overall boiler suit coverall patterns out in the ethernet however they're not all super size inclusive so i've only picked a couple of patterns here i have made a couple of coveralls and overalls and jumpsuits over the last year and a half i'm not making any more but i will share with you the patterns that i found so from a big four perspective, I found McCall's 7330. And this is truly just your basic utility style jumpsuit. It's got um, options for either a mandarin collar or a standard collar. It buttons down to the waist. Um, and then it's just kind of a slim pant. Um, truly the epitome of like a, a utility style jumpsuit. Um, I have made two pairs of coveralls in the last year and a half. The first pair that I made, the first pair that I made, I was a pattern tester for Herbaccia, Herbaccia Studio Patterns, and the coveralls were called the Chicoria overalls, coveralls. And I made those in an ice dye fabric. Actually, I made them in a muslin, 
And then I ice dyed the muslin. It was um, my very first ice dye project and I was really happy with how that came out. I'll put a picture of it here. I actually really liked the way that those coveralls looked on me, but I had over compensated for the crotch length and so they were really difficult to get in and out. I made them fit my crotch once they were on and I think for coveralls you kind of need a little bit of wiggle room in the crotch in, a, in order to be able to get them on and off and so once I made them fit when they were on I couldn't get that thing on and off without help from my husband. It was torture. So I ended up donating those to Goodwill um, but they did come out really cute. Um, the pattern was interesting to make. I didn't struggle with really any of the, um, with any of the instructions other than the zipper. Um, and I think she's worked that through with her pattern testing. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great pattern, very size inclusive. The other pattern that I have made is the Seamwork Campbell, and I made that in September for my collaboration with Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs, and I made them as a short all. And those were super easy to make. I do need to take those in a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of bunching at the back side, um, but those are super cute. I made them in an Ankara fabric, and I think I will get some wear out of those. Um, they're shorts, so I won't be wearing them again until next year. They're shorts and short sleeve. Um, but yeah, those were super fun to make. And again, Seamwork, super size inclusive um, pattern company. The last trend that I wanna share with you is boxy blazers. Now, I only pulled out, I only found two patterns for this trend because it's one that I might make. I, I have a hard time thinking about this because I don't know that it would be really suitable to my lifestyle, but yet I do go to the office three to four times a year and I could see having an oversized blazer to wear with like some skinny jeans or even some thicker legging, like nicer leggings, not, you know, workout leggings. Um, and, you know, maybe some ankle booties or something in the, in the fall or winter would be cute. So I, it's something I could contemplate, even though I don't see it in my everyday life, I could see maybe having it as an option to take when I go to the office those few times a year. So the two patterns that I found, I found one big four and then one indie. The big four pattern is, the big four pattern is Simplicity 8697. It is just an oversized blazer and there are, let's see what the options are. Um, from a size perspective, it does go up to bust size 50. So this one could technically fit me. The finished bust measurement is 59 and a half. I hate that they don't put the finished waist and hip measurements on these packets. They only put the finished bust measurement. Um, I am having a hard time figuring out what the difference is between A and B. I think it's the collar. The um, view A has a traditional notched collar and view B looks like it has a shawl collar and might be double breasted. It's hard to tell because um, the line drawings don't show the front <laughs> and the pattern cover image of view B is in a very patterned fabric so it's hard to tell. But I, I think that's the difference is a notch collar and a shawl collar and single breasted versus double breasted. But yeah, that's a nice um, pattern from Simplicity. And then the other one is the one that makes the rounds all the time is the Heather Blazer from Friday Pattern Company. And it's just a, it's just an oversized boxy blazer. It's unstructured. Um, it has, let's see, it has a traditional notched collar. It's single breasted. It's got patch pockets on the front. Um, this would be the one that I would choose out of the two. Um, but, uh, I'm still uncertain about this one. So yeah, I would love to hear from you which pattern, which trend do you think you might try or which trend have you already tried or which trend is a staple in your wardrobe? Let me know any of those things. If you have some other patterns to share for any of these trends that I didn't share, there's, there's tons of patterns for all of these trends, to be honest with you. I just shared the ones that 
resonated with me, then please share them in the comment box for everybody to see. Um, Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you next time. Bye.